Okay, when we talk about solids, which is our next little topic, um, the two most popular solids on the test are going to be rectangular prisms, and that, you know, cubes as well, lumped into that, um, and then cylinders, right cylinders to be specific. So the first thing that we want to know is uh, if we were given some sort of rectangular prism, how would we figure out uh, what its volume is? So we've got our nice little rectangular solid here. Um, volume is just it's pretty easy. It's going to be all three of your different side lengths multiplied together. So in this case, length times width times height. Um, the basic idea is with any kind of uniform, regular solid of some sort, um, you take the area of the base and you just multiply that by the height. So in this case, it's just length times width times height. Pretty simple. Okay, now the surface area is a little bit more complicated. The idea with surface area is that surface area is basically the entire covering area of the shape. So for instance, uh, if you take a common rectangular solid like a book, it's everything that you can touch on the outside of the book. So you're touching the cover, front and back, the spine on the left hand side, the open you know, pages on the right, and then top and bottom. So when you're looking at surface area, all you have to do is find the three different faces and then multiply them by two. So you've got two times, let's do length times width. So that would kind of be the top and bottom um, of our figure. And then you have to add two times, our next one would be height and width. So two times height and width. And then two times our last side that we haven't dealt with. So that would be length and height. And you can write it in whatever order you want as long as you know that you're doing two times each one of those sides. Okay, so it's pretty much the basics of uh, rectangular solids. Let's look at cylinders. So, volume of the cylinder, same basic idea. You take the area of the bottom, and then you multiply it by the height. And since the bottom is just a circle, all we have to do is take the area of a circle. So pi r squared times the height would give you the volume. Now the surface area is a little bit more complicated, um, but again, same basic idea. So when you're looking at a cylinder, the top and the bottom are the same, and they're just circles. So you just find 2 times pi r squared for those. But we're missing something, which is what happens around the outside of the cylinder. So the basic idea is if you take a cylinder, and you take a cut out of it and peel it. Let's say it's a can of soda. You're gonna, you're going to like peel a label off of it, or rather a water bottle, since unless you're dealing with a plastic bottle, you don't have a label on on soda cans. So uh, you have a water bottle, and you're gonna peel the label off. So you would cut down its label, and then if you stretch it out, it's just a rectangle. So this is the height, same height that we saw up here, and then what you're going to see in terms of the uh, the base of your rectangle is that that's the circumference of the circle. So circumference of circle. So if you're trying to find the surface area, all you have to do is take your two your base your two bases, and then you're adding this rectangle. So you would add height times 2 pi r, or pi d, either way, it's totally fine. Okay, so those are the basic ideas in terms of solids. And a lot of solids problems are going to give you a volume, and then let's say they give you the volume, they give you the length, and the height, you have to find the width. So you're basically just filling in to the formulas that we have. Um, but there are kind of more complex solids problems, which I'll go ahead and show you an example of. Okay, so this is a pretty typical word problem for solids. So the question is, uh, cube 1 has edges twice as long as those of cube 2. The volume of cube 1 is how much bigger than the volume of cube 2? So you could draw out two cubes, one being smaller, one being larger, and, you know, pick numbers for the uh, edges. And 
you know, you could do that and that would be fine. It might be easier to just use the formulas that we have. So we know that the volume of any kind of rectangular solid is length times width times height. And in the case of a cube, length, width, and height are all the exact same thing. So they're just edge cubed. So the volume of a cube is edge cubed. So if cube 1 has edges twice as big as those of cube 2, we know that if we say that E is the edge of cube 2, then 2E is the edge of cube 1. And you can plug in, instead of E, you can use like 1 or 2, so that this is a little bit easier to see. Um, so I'll actually show you guys both ways. So you could say, okay, um, if E is for cube 2, then we know volume of 2 is just E to the third. And then we could say volume of cube 1 is equal to 2 times E to the third. So when you have 2 to the third and, you know, e to the third, you basically can separate them out. Um, so you would just end up with 8 times e to the third. So when you compare these e to the third and 8 times e to the third, you know that the volume is 8 times bigger. So you would put in 8 would be your answer. But I'll also show you how you can just do this with numbers if... That's a little bit harder to see. So um, you would just have to pick numbers. So, okay, um, edge of cube 1, I'm just going to say is 1. Why not? So E equals 1, so the volume would just equal 1. So the edge in cube 2 is twice as big. So it would have to be, or rather, sorry, the edge in cube 1 is twice as big, so it would have to be 2. And then the volume would equal 2 to the third, or 8. So that's the other way that we could find the same exact answer. Both same idea, um, just sometimes, you know, using some of our acceptable cheating methods makes things a little bit easier. Okay, let's go ahead and let's end this video off with a typical complex solid question. So in this one, um, we have a cube, and we're looking for the length from A to B. Now notice... A to B, um, A and B are not on the same face of this cube, which is why it's a complex solid question. If B were, uh, let's say, over here, where I'm putting this dot, it would be a much, much different question, because when we would just be dealing with this 2D square in the front. However, we have to deal with a 3D situation. So uh, let's go ahead and let's start marking up our figure, try to figure out how to do this. So. Um, the first thing to do is just draw in what you're looking for. It'll make it a little bit easier to see. So you go ahead and you draw this line from A to B. Now notice this line from A to B, really there's nothing at this moment that we could do to figure it out without drawing in something else. So what we want to do is we've got from A to B, and then we also have any of the other sides that are touching either A or B. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this height of the triangle because they already gave it to us and it attaches nicely. So then if you guys might be able to see this already, I'm already drawing a triangle and it just so happens to be a right triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that triangle off. So we've got a right triangle here and its height is 3. Now the trick is to find its base so that we can find its hypotenuse. And as of right now, the base is the diagonal across the square bottom of the triangle. So if you're just looking at the uh, bottom square, this is the base of our triangle, the big triangle on the top. So uh, if we have a square on the bottom, and we know that all the edges are going to be 3 on this cube, so we've got 3 and 3 as our base and height, we're just trying to find the hypotenuse. Now, since we've uh, we've done these a couple times, questions that, that use your special triangles, you guys probably at this point have realized how important they are. So, whenever you have a 90 degree triangle and two of the sides are the same, aka it's isosceles, it's going to be a 45, 45, 90, which means that the ratios are x, x, x root 2. So we would put 3 root 2 along this hypotenuse. And that would become the base of our top triangle. 
So then at that point, we could use Pythagorean theorem. So we would say AB squared is equal to 3 squared plus 3 rad 2 squared. So then at that point, we're just uh, solving for it. So we've got 9 plus, you distribute uh, your square, so you end up with like 9 times 2. So you've got 9 plus 18, which gives you 27. And then you want to square both sides because we still have AD squared. So and once you square both sides, you've got that length AB is equal to radical 27. And then you're always trying to figure out if you can simplify radicals. So I know that I can take a 9 out of that. So I would say is equal to radical 9 times 3. And then radical 9 is just 3. So 3 root 3 would be your answer. Okay, guys. Wonderful job hanging in there. Um, that complex problem, complex figure problem is pretty difficult. All right. So uh, next video, we're going to go ahead and cover some trig and move into things like logic and analysis questions. But you guys are so close to done with learning all the math concepts.